There are three supplements with strong human evidence that they do help to treat skin wrinkles. The trouble is, if you search for them on Google, you're met with an avalanche of different options, and unfortunately, most of them are complete garbage. There are a lot of misleading claims based on single cell research, so we don't necessarily care what happens to a single skin cell in a lab. What we care about are the human, randomized controlled trials. So what do I mean by this? Well, if we're testing a supplement to see if it does reverse skin wrinkles, what we want to do is give one group the supplement we're testing, and another group the placebo, then we'll follow them up over a period of time to see what that supplement actually does to wrinkles. Does it further improve skin wrinkles over and above a placebo? A fantastic example of this is astaxanthin, which is an incredibly popular supplement in the longevity space. It's used as a so-called anti-inflammatory and antioxidant supplement. In the lab, it does seem to improve skin cell inflammation levels. But when it was tested in a randomized controlled trial and compared to a placebo, there was no difference in inflammation levels, skin elasticity, or skin wrinkles. So let's move on to the three supplements that do have good evidence from human randomized controlled trials. The first one is collagen peptides. Now this supplement is shrouded in controversy and confusion. So let's clear things up. Collagen peptide supplements have taken the long ropes of collagen and chopped them up into shorter chains of amino acids, and amino acids make up protein. So critics of collagen peptides will say that so long as your body is getting enough protein from the diet, since we break protein down into amino acids, there's probably going to be no benefit from collagen peptide supplements. Here's the thing though, our digestive system has got specific peptide transporters, so we can directly absorb these collagen peptides into our bloodstream where they're transported to the skin. And we can see this from mechanistic studies where the peptides are labeled so we know exactly how these peptides are being absorbed. What we see is that the peptides are absorbed into the blood and transported to the skin. But we can't just rely on mechanisms, what we need is evidence from human randomized controlled trials. In 2014, a double-blind placebo-controlled trial showed that collagen peptides did improve skin elasticity compared to placebo. But how much is this improvement? Is it a 1% improvement? A 10% improvement? And how is the skin measured? Well, the skin elasticity is measured by a cutometer, which is an incredibly precise measurement. And in the 2014 trial, there was a 7% improvement in skin elasticity. In 2015, another trial was done and again we see significant improvements in skin hydration and elasticity. This particular study also took skin biopsies and looked at those biopsies under the microscope. The scientists could see that the group that took collagen peptides had significant improvements in their skin collagen compared to a placebo. The improvement was around 12%. Now, while randomized controlled trials are great, ideally what we want to do is combine all of the relevant studies to see exactly what they show, and this is called a meta-analysis. So in 2020, 10 randomized controlled trials were combined, and all of those studies reported beneficial effects on skin moisture, elasticity, and wrinkle number. The good news continues in 2021, where a further study again showed improvements with collagen peptide supplements. And once again in 2022, there was an improvement in skin wrinkles by about 8% with the collagen peptide group compared to placebo. Finally, in 2023, another meta-analysis was done that combined all of the latest clinical trials together. Once again, we see significant improvements in skin hydration and elasticity with collagen peptide supplements compared to a placebo. Now let's tackle the controversy head on. What we've compared so far is what happens if you take collagen peptides compared to a placebo. But again, the critics will say if you have enough protein in your diet, then there won't be any benefits. So in 2020, a randomized controlled trial was done in burn patients, and it compared collagen peptides to protein. Overall, the scientists found that the burn wounds, they healed significantly faster with collagen peptides compared to protein. Overall, we have evidence that collagen peptide supplements offer benefits to our skin beyond protein intake. We can directly absorb the short chains of collagen peptides into our blood and they're transported to our skin. So personally, I take 10 to 15 grams of collagen peptides every day. The second out of three supplements with good evidence of benefits for our skin is vitamin B3. Quoting directly from the clinical guidelines, vitamin B3 skin creams improve fine lines and wrinkles. I bring this up because it's likely not just skin creams that improve signs of skin aging, it's also supplements as well. This is evidenced by a 2015 randomized controlled trial involving 386 participants. 
After 12 months, the group who took vitamin B3 had a 23% lower rate of new skin cancers compared to the placebo group. As always though, when looking at research like this, we need to have a look at the other side. Further analysis has been done of that 2015 study, and it did cast doubt on the results. Particularly when in 2023 another randomized controlled trial was done, and there were no improvements in skin cancer rates. For me personally, I like the idea of supporting my NAD levels by supplementing with vitamin B3. So I've elected to supplement with 50 milligrams of vitamin B3 as part of microvitamin. But as always, just because I take a supplement does not in any way mean that you should as well. The third supplement to improve skin wrinkles that does have stronger evidence compared to vitamin B3 is hyaluronic acid. And at the end of the video, I'll share with you the skin creams that also have good human evidence that they improve skin wrinkles. Hyaluronic acid is the backbone of our connective tissue. It helps to hold everything together. The trouble is, as we age, it gets broken down. For example, a 75-year-old person only has about one quarter of the amount of hyaluronic acid in their skin, compared to a 19-year-old person. But luckily for us, there's evidence that we can rebuild our hyaluronic acid in our skin. Experiments have been done that labelled the hyaluronic acid supplements to see exactly how they are absorbed. And yes, from those experiments, we can absorb hyaluronic acid and it's transported to our skin. But hyaluronic acid is a long molecule, and from the research that we have at the moment, that long molecule is broken down by our gut bacteria into shorter pieces, and then it's absorbed. So what do the human randomized controlled trials show? Well, in 2017, a randomized controlled trial was done with three separate groups. One group took short chains of hyaluronic acid, another group took very long chains of hyaluronic acid, and another group took a placebo. What the scientists found is that both groups of hyaluronic acid had significant improvements in skin wrinkles compared to a placebo, but there didn't seem to be a difference between the long ropes of hyaluronic acid and the short ropes of hyaluronic acid, as in both groups offered the same benefit. There are a couple of conclusions that we can draw. One is that hyaluronic acid supplements do improve skin wrinkles, but there doesn't appear to be much difference between long ropes of hyaluronic acid and short ropes of hyaluronic acid. More randomized controlled trials were done in 2021, both showing significant improvements, and one study showed that wrinkles appeared to decrease by a whopping 18%. Importantly, that study had no conflicts of interest to declare. It wasn't sponsored by a supplement company. The one concern about hyaluronic acid supplements that you'll often see on social media is a concern that hyaluronic acid supplements may accelerate cancer. This comes from single cell research showing that if you give those single cells more hyaluronic acid, it can encourage cancer growth. But in separate studies of mice that already had cancer, when hyaluronic acid was given, there was no difference in cancer growth. Personally, I take 200 milligrams of hyaluronic acid in the low molecular weight form. So remember, our gut bacteria break down hyaluronic acid into the low molecular weight form. So I take that form to help absorption. And I take it as part of microvitamin. But it's not only diet, exercise, sleep and supplements that can help improve skin wrinkles. It's also skin creams. There's great evidence for particular types of sunscreens, retinoid creams, moisturizers with ceramides and nicotinamide, as well as certain exfoliants. And in this video here, I go through all of those creams in great detail, and a massive thank you to all of the patrons supporting the channel.